Have you ever wondered what's the story behind the biggest aerospace company? Today, we're taking a look back on how it all started. Airbus is indeed one of the largest aerospace companies globally. Established in 1970, Airbus has become a major player in the aerospace industry. Known for its commercial aircraft, helicopters, defense, and space products and services. With its headquarters in Toulouse, France, Airbus operates worldwide, employing thousands of people and serving a broad customer base. Its flagship products include the A320, A330, A350, and A380 families of commercial aircraft, as well as various military aircraft and space systems. Welcome to Money Doc TV, a channel dedicated to entrepreneurs who risked it all to create today's most iconic brands. Let's get started. Airbus is a leader in the design, manufacture, and delivery of aerospace products, services, and solutions to a global customer base, with operations for commercial aircraft, helicopters, defense, space, and security. The company has a 50-year history of innovation, technological firsts, and industry milestones. Explore some of the company's greatest moments over the last 50 years and discover more about Airbus's ongoing success story by perusing the in-depth, history in-depth sections below. 1960s, 90s, laying the foundations, helicopters history. Jean Contigno, an engineer at Sencaso, was hired by AISA in 1953 to develop a helicopter range. After Asia's bankruptcy in 1962, Contigno returned to France and joined Matra. He designed and finalized the BAM version, which was later called the Fayon, due to opposition from the Walt Disney Group. The Fayon was an elegant two-seater helicopter with 180 HP and no rear rotor, but was abandoned in 1963 due to stability issues. The French Air Force sought a turbine engine tactical helicopter to enhance its capabilities. In collaboration with Turbomeca, a study was conducted to improve altitude performance using two Turbomeca Bastan I-4 turbines. The first aircraft, the H-34BB, the second aircraft, H-34BB No Hero 2, made its first flight on 27 June 1963. Despite the improved performance and safety, the Air Force abandoned the Sikorsky H-34. In 63 test flight results led to a modification of the Super Freyland helicopter to break speed records. Marcel Rifford, a racing airplane designer, helped refine the aircraft. The B105 was the first light twin-engine helicopter to enter commercial service, featuring a rigid Bokau-designed rotor that was flight-tested for over 1,000 hours on an Alouette II. Its maiden flight took place on February 16, 1967, and it was unveiled at the Paris Air Show four months later. The Bo 105 program was significant as it gave a jump start to the helicopter sector in West Germany and other countries due to its suitability for numerous missions and its twin engines, which which enhanced safety. Nearly 1,500 Bo 105s were built, and its more recent versions are still in widespread service. In 1968, the helicopter division decided to combine the airframe of an Alouette II with the dynamic components of the Alouette III, and the helicopter performed its first flight on March 17, 1969. The Lama initially planned to land the helicopter on top of the Himalayas, but eventually decided to set a world record using the aircraft. Jean Boulet set the altitude record for all categories combined when he climbed to 12,142 meters in 1972, which still stands today. Aerospatiale played a major role in the development of satellite launchers. The Dauphin, originally designed as the successor to the Alouette III, was adopted by the British and French armies, but did not enjoy expected commercial success on the civil market due to its price. Investigating the birth of Airbus. Airbus, a global industry titan, was born in the heart of Bavaria and was obsessed with both power and ambition. Born into a wealthy family, Strauss rose to become a key architect of post-war Germany, but his passion for aviation led him to see it as the embodiment of progress and European technological might. He believed that aviation could shatter limitations of distance and speed, and that engineers could use the bleeding edge of aeronautics to bring a collaborative European Airbus to the sky. Airbus was the perfect embodiment of this unity, merging engineering prowess with a political purpose. 
Forging this military engine was fraught with challenges, national pride clashed with the need for compromise, and engineers from different backgrounds locked horns on design philosophies. Political winds shifted, threatening to ground the entire project before it took off. The A300 was a gamble, as convincing airlines that a twin-engine aircraft could safely cross oceans was an uphill battle. Airbus engineers, led by Roger Bete, believed in their calculations and the potential of advanced new engines from the likes of General Electric. The A300's wide-body design revolutionized passenger comfort, allowing airlines to fit hundreds of passengers and increase profitability on sought-after routes linking major cities. In the first few years, Airbus faced the classic innovator's dilemma. Breaking into lucrative markets like the United States proved an uphill battle, and Airbus became adept at the art of the lease offering tempting short-term deals to let hesitant airlines try the A300 in action. Strauss leveraged his political influence to secure early orders for Airbus planes, especially from state-owned German airline Lanza, demonstrating his relentless drive to get Airbus off the ground. Airbus, a new era of innovation. Airbus, a fledgling company, was initially viewed as a technological leap forward by airlines with its wider seats and quieter cabin. However, it took time and demonstrable success to break down barriers of doubt in the industry. Airbus's goal was to build a family of aircraft to fill every niche in the market and continually break new technological ground. The A310, a shortened derivative of the A300, arrived in the early 1980s, offering airlines the same advanced technology, but in a smaller package, optimized for medium to long-range routes. This strategic move opened new markets, proving Airbus could cater to diverse needs. The rise of the A340 and A300 led to a relentless struggle for both technological innovation and market share. The A380 was conceived as the pinnacle of air travel Travel, but the project faced delays, complex wiring problems, and political wrangling. Despite these challenges, Airbus remained determined to push the limits of what was possible in commercial aviation. Airbus, a leading European aerospace giant. Airbus, a leading European aerospace conglomerate, faced numerous challenges and setbacks throughout its history. The A380 and A400M were two of the most ambitious projects, but they also faced financial and internal issues. Today, Airbus boasts a diverse portfolio of aircraft catering to virtually every segment of the market. The A320 family remains the workhorse, with models like the A330 and UTR offering wide-body capability with cutting-edge technology. Globalization is evident, with components sourced from a worldwide network of suppliers. In the future, Airbus is investing heavily in the pursuit of zero-emission aircraft, exploring three radical concepts, a turbofan design fueled by liquid hydrogen, a turboprop design for shorter routes, and a futuristic blended-wing body concept for unparalleled efficiency. Airbus's story is one of European cooperation, with engineers from across the continent working together to define world-class innovation. We really hope you enjoyed today's video. How world's biggest aerospace company was born, Airbus. Be sure to leave a like and comment below on what you loved about our video. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to never miss another great video. Until next time, we look forward to seeing you in our next video. Remember, no dream is too big.